and time spent in his presence causes a reaction in your spirit that begins to manifest in your life. And it's evident to everyone around you. You see, the secret to the life of the believer is that they spend time alone in fellowship with God. If I asked you the question this morning, how often do you spend time alone with God? I'm sure that you would not be satisfied with your answer. If I ask myself the question, well, how often do you spend time alone with God? The answer is this, not enough. Not enough. You see, because I can tell by the way things happen. I can tell by the way I guide my life. I can tell by the way I maneuver. I can tell by things that take place in my life whether or not I've spent enough time alone with Him. I can tell by the way I react to things and situations. I can tell whether or not I've got a measure of peace that passes all understanding. I can tell whether or not I've been keeping my mind stayed on Him because He's keeping me in perfect peace as a result of it. I can tell whether or not my witness is clear. So I would have to say along with you, how long do you spend time with God? How often alone with Him? Not enough. And so my spirit cries out, God, I want to get alone with you more. Oh, God, to be in your presence just a little while longer, to shut everything else out and to get alone with you because there's nothing like being with you. There's not anything in this world that compares to the glory of being alone with Him in His presence. There's not a friend. There's not a lover. There's not anyone in your life. There's not a substitute of any kind that this world can ever manufacture that will ever take the place of being alone with the God of glory who loves you more than you'll ever know. It's time to climb Mount Sinai. It's time to start going up the mountain of works. It's time to start trekking our way uh, and brick by brick, uh, rock by rock, uh, step by step, handful by handful, get to that place uh, where he awaits us. It says, I've been waiting for you. Oh, I've got a meal prepared for you. As Jesus stood on the shore of Galilee and called out to the disciples in the boat, Boys, come on, I've got breakfast. Shabarokusete. I've got food to eat that you've never eaten. Drink that you'll never, ever partake of anywhere else. Something in my presence that you'll get only from me. I've said it so many times before, but it bears repeating. The evangelistic call is found in Revelation and preachers use it to call the unsaved. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. But my brother and my sister, let me quickly point out that that is not to the unbeliever. That message is to the church. It's to the church in Revelation. Behold, church. Behold, believer. Look, listen, pay attention, my child. I'm standing at the door of your heart, at the door of your life, at the door of your existence, and I'm knocking because I want to come in. Would you turn the TV off? Would you turn the radio off? Would you turn the iPod off? Would you turn off the cell phone? Would you put the magazines away? Would you put everything else away? Come and answer the door. Let me in and I will feed you. Now 
I guarantee you 89 and 9 tenths percent of your problems will vanish in the presence of Jehovah. Because you'll get a word. You'll get a direction. You'll get a directive. You'll get an understanding. You'll get an instruction. You'll get an instinct in your spirit that knows that you're hearing from the voice of Almighty God. And he'll speak a word that will change your life forever. You see, time spent in prayer and reading the word, alone with him. No, we don't neglect the forsaking, the, 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 the assembling of ourselves together. We don't neglect that. We come to church on Sunday. We get into the house of God on Wednesday. We go to special event. We, we come together as believers. We do those things because they're necessary. But that is no substitute. For being alone with him. Christian television is wonderful, but it's not a substitute. Your favorite Christian magazine is wonderful, but it's not a substitute. Time spent alone in the presence of God in prayer, in meditation, and in reading of His Word should have such an effect on your life that people will know that you have been with God. And so then that becomes the means by which you and I are transformed and we go from glory to glory. Because the more time we spend with Him, the more times we climb Mount Sinai, we climb it. The more times we advance up the mountain, the more times we push forward to stand in His presence, to hear from Him, and to listen to what He has to say. The more times we do, we then go from glory to glory to glory to glory. It doesn't happen on the bottom of the mountain, folks. The Bible says that Israel stood apart from the mountain. They were gathered together and Moses went up by himself. You can't go there with somebody else. Please let me just quickly admonish you. You've got to go by yourself. Because we come to him alone. Oh, I come to the garden alone, the song says, while the dew is still on the roses and... The voice that I hear falls on my ear. The Son of God discloses. And He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am His own. And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known. Paul said it this way in 2 Corinthians 3.18, And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. I came to tell you this morning that Moses had that encounter. Stephen had that encounter. The disciples had that encounter. The little girl in the New Hebrides had that encounter. I came to tell you this morning that you too can have that encounter. Ah, hallelujah. I said, you too can have that encounter. It is not exclusive. God is no respecter of persons, but he will grant it to everyone who is willing to take the time, the energy, and the effort to climb the mountain of words. And to get alone in his presence. You can come from that kind of an encounter and go into a dark and a desperate world with your face shining with the glory of God reflecting out of your countenance 
with the power, the peace, and the presence, and the purpose of God manifesting out of your very life and soul. Because you've been alone on the mountain. And you've been speaking with God. Every head bowed and every eye closed. In this place today, our first mountain climbing experience for the month, I would simply ask this question, do not raise your hand, but ask yourself, have I spent enough time alone with God? Do I spend enough time alone with God? You don't need to give an answer to anyone except yourself. And whatever the answer to that question is, it'll probably be the same as mine and countless others. Not enough time. Not enough. I could spend, need to spend, want to spend more. There's something in the depth of my spirit that calls as deep calls unto deep and he calls me to himself. He says, come on, come unto me. Are you laboring? I'll take the labor from you. Are you weary? I'll strengthen you. Are you needy? I will meet your needs. I'll give you direction, I'll give you words, I'll give you understanding, I'll give you what you need. But it's in my presence. It's in my presence. It's in my presence. You won't get it anywhere else. It'll only be found in His presence. I challenge you this morning, child of God, I challenge you to begin stepping up to the mountain. I challenge you to get up into the high elevation where God breathes. I challenge you to move up to that place where the atmosphere is literally charged with His glory. I challenge you to move into that place where His radiance is so great that you've got to cover your eyes. And when you open them, other people will see that you've been alone with Him. I challenge you this morning. And I encourage you, I encourage you to move into that experience. It's something you'll never, ever regret. And then there'll be a, a sense in your soul that there will be an emptiness in your spirit that can only be filled by being alone with Him again and again and again. So that you can go from glory to glory to glory to glory. If that's your heart, if that's your life, if that's your understanding today and you've heard God speak into your life today and He said, come on apart, set apart yourself. Come on, get alone with me. And you're willing to say yes, you're willing to climb the mountain one more time. Maybe you've never done it before, but today's your first day. Or maybe it's been a long time since you've climbed that mountain. And everything else has gotten in the way and God is saying, come on up higher. If that's you today, stand to your feet. Say, yes, God, I'm going to climb the mountain. Yes, God, I want to hear from you. Yes, God, uh, whatever you want. Yes, God, time in your presence. Yes, God, alone with you. Yes, God, uh, to hear from you. Yes, God, to be fed by your hand. To sit down at the table with you. To eat what you have for me. Nothing else will satisfy. Nothing else will ever measure up but being alone with Him. This morning, I encourage you to know that you take that first step and by His power, He will aid you up the hill. And you'll find yourself alone in His presence. Ah, you'll find yourself there where the air is clean, where His voice is clear, and where nothing else matters but Him. I encourage you, church. I encourage you, child of God. I encourage you, new believer. I encourage you, saint veteran of God. I encourage you, move into the house of His presence. Move into the mountain of His glory. Climb Mount Sinai and get alone with Him. And your face will reflect His power. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Say yes, God. I'll do it. I'll do it. By your power. For your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, this kind of glory. We need your prayer.